Hello again, everybody, to the Live Better Connected podcast. Now, I am excited today because part of the challenge of our Live Better Connected campaign has been to challenge people as to how connected they are. This is a how connected are you challenge we have online um, and many people have taken it. But today we're going to be, uh, uh, we are meeting with Ian Morris, who is an editor of Light Reading, who we cheekily challenged to uh, see if he could get through a day without a SIM card and his mobile phone. So firstly, welcome to the podcast, Ian. Thanks, Gary. It's nice to be here. Excellent. So um, what was your reaction when we first asked you this? I was was intrigued. I mean, we don't normally do, uh, I suppose, that kind of journalism. We're normally writing stories up on, uh, you know, organisations and what's happened to them and network deals. So I think it's always fun to sort of put yourself into the story in a way and do something from a first person perspective. It's a little bit unusual for light reading. So, yeah, it had me... uh, it had me intrigued initially, and then I thought probably, oh, I can I can cope. You know, I'm old school. I'm nearly fifty years old, so it won't be that bad. Uh, and then, as, you, as you've noticed, I ended up postponing doing it. I think. For about well, six I was going to say uh, I wasn't going to let you get away with that one. We uh, we asked you to take it. I think on two occasions you had to abandon because you needed to be connected, which uh, I think you know says quite a lot in in itself. But it does. So, I, I almost feel like I chickened out in a way of, of doing it. <laughs> 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 well, well, for our listeners, the, the rules of the game were effectively um, Ian could use a mobile phone, um, but he had to take his SIM card out. So that meant he could use uh, his home Wi-Fi or when he was about and about connect up to um, Wi-Fi hotspots when they were around. So it was essentially a, a challenge to re- see how having you know in between those or even the convenience and, and what it would feel like. And, and equally, you know, something we all expect now is almost a given that you have this connection. Activity. What was it like to take that away? So, first results. What? How did you start your day, and, and what was the first feelings? Well, I, I started. So I, again, a number of false starts, which were to do with things like just sort of having to have it for for work and and travelling, and knowing that people were going to call me. And I, I guess that says a lot about how much you actually need to to have a phone on you these days, and you, you can't really make do without it. So, in in a way, it kind of scores me down. I think even before I started, then I eventually found. A day of the week when I didn't want to do it on a day when I was literally just going to be at home because that would sort of make for boring anecdotes. So I picked a day when I, I knew my son was on holiday and wanted taking somewhere. And I thought I'll work, you know, where he, where I'm going to be taking him. And I've got a few calls to make and I've got a few things to do and we'll see how it goes. And I thought I'll start doing it at six in the mo- six in the morning till six the next day, basically. So 24 hours early start. Idea was to get up, try and get a few things done. Uh, and then get going and um, yeah so I found myself sort of scrabbling around at six in the morning trying to get the sim card out um, managed managed to get that done and then the first part of the day wasn't too bad I mean while I was at home kind of working I think we forget how you know how reliant we are these days on wi-fi it's it's pretty ubiquitous every home's got broadband we can fall back on that tech quite easily um, I've got Wi-Fi calling on my phone. I mean, that, that's maybe one thing if people don't have that, that they'd be, um, you know, they'd struggle a bit more with this uh, with this sort of approach, um, especially if you don't have a fixed line phone, which we don't. I, I have to, uh, you know, I have to have to say we've sort of got rid of that. But but the first few hours are OK. I was able to get things done. And then it was it was this, it was a point of leaving the house kind of around about lunchtime when things, you know, that, that's when it really got difficult. Um, so, I mean, yeah. the first first stage of this seems like, as you say, you've, you've, you're at your home, you've got your Wi-Fi, you're connected. Um, so it was that sort of initial now, you're going past that front door. Yeah, so going past the front door. So this was, phone's in the pocket, I've got, you know, I've got everything I think I need. And you set off and you immediately have that kind of feeling of like anxiety. I, I, it's It's quite odd because you know that there's, I think one thing we all do these days, I mean, we like to make fun of people who walk along the street sort of, you know, staring at their phone and almost bumping into other people. And, you know, I know I know in some magazine articles, they've been sort of made out to be a bit of a joke, but everybody does it. I think we all sort of find ourselves wondering, you just, even if you're just checking the time or you know, looking at a text message or whatever it might be, you know, glancing at a, a news story, um, you're, you have that sort of desire to be on your handset all the time and I think knowing that your handset just become this kind of dumb object that you know you, you can look at some photos you've taken or maybe a book you've downloaded but in every other respect it's basically become useless makes you feel quite anxious if you've got used to doing it for a few years 
So, and it was literally like round the corner from leaving the, the house. I was with my son and even he was like, he was starting to sort of panic a bit himself because one thing I, I do is use my phone to, to make a lot of payments these days. So, and that includes using the um, NFC for, for the bus. Now you can, as I found out, you can do that. But what you can't do is then immediately check how much it's taken off your account. If you use like a Monzo card and it deducts and it's real time and you can see what's happening, it just doesn't update until you're back in a sort of connectivity zone or you're on Wi-Fi again. And uh, I'm one of those weird people, I think, in this, you know, sort of inflationary era. I kind of like to know exactly what I'm spending there. And then it's like having money in your wallet, isn't it, in the old, old days, having cash in and you can see what's coming out. What's so the anxiety. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, yeah, very anxious, yeah. Well, that's yeah. interesting. I mean, I, I was similarly on a bus the other day and, and I had the similar sort of where my phone, the I, it wouldn't work to pay. And I was like, oh my God. So I had to had to ask the bus driver to let me reset my phone. And you're thinking, oh, wow, what's going on here? It's yeah, say, totally and holding, holding people up and getting in the way <laughs> and things like that. So, yeah, it's... Um... Wow, so, okay, so you, you managed to you get on the bus at the moment. You sort of, sorry, I don't know, if it's almost a feeling of not having your keys or something. Yeah, very similar, I think, to not having your keys or, or feeling like, you know, when you leave the house and you're worried that you've left something on or it's just that sort of slightly unsettled feeling. And then the other thing is you're worried that someone's trying to get hold of you. So this age of hyper connectivity, um, you know, I mean, doing a job that, that I do, I'm, I need to be available. People try and phone you up. They, whether it's a colleague, whether it's somebody with, with some kind of update on something that's happened, um, there's always somebody trying to reach you use, usually. I mean, to, to do this now, I've turned my phone off, obviously. So, but, but leaving the house and knowing that I was going to be cutting into my workday a bit anyway, it, was, it made me feel really uneasy that people couldn't reach me. And I knew that this bus journey was going to take me to walk to the bus station, then get to Clapham Common, where I was going with my son, and then find somewhere to work and get Wi-Fi. I was going to be out of contact for 45 minutes to an hour at least so 45 minutes uh, and the sweat's yeah. already building up sweat's um, building up. <laughs> oh, no, someone's trying to reach me and there's an emergency somewhere so it's 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 yeah it's really unsettling i think yeah more than that's I that, that, yeah that's sort of adds this ultra connectedness that again you know you, once you take that away it, it's fascinating i'd uh, so you're, you're on the bus um yeah. and and how was the journey i mean you know did you talk to your son <laughs> well again this is so this is the weird thing you, you normally you sort of sit there on the bus and you're reading you know you're using your phone to read a news story or you're checking emails and i thought you know you think i can i can actually use the journey to do a bit of work i can sort of send some messages to people or or do something else um i mean i have been on buses where i've tethered the phone to my laptop before if i've you know or, or usually on a train actually but you know you, you do that tethering thing where you take advantage of the cellular connectivity to get some work done obviously couldn't do that so you, you, i'm literally sitting there and um it's like oh no i have to make conversation with my 13 year old and which is a, in a way it's a nice thing i mean that's maybe one of the positive things is that we you know we want to have conversation. but but then he he's he's obviously on his device so he wasn't really that interested in engaging because he's looking at his phone so um so yeah it's it's uh there's that sort of entertainment work side of it. I think when we're on public transport, people maybe underestimate that, that you use it a lot. I mean, you do have Wi-Fi options, I know, these days on the on the trains, not really on buses, but certainly on trains. But it's pretty useless in my experience. So uh, in some ways, you, there is a dead time there, you know, in terms yeah. of the productivity aspect. So being able to check your emails, keep on top, top of things. You know, some people find that comforting because then they know when they go home, they're not going to have a mountain of emails. And actually, it, it's useful time. Um on the old analog option, there is always you know, the newspapers you can read. You can still get this sort of uh, the paper yes. one, so it's not yeah. impossible. It's not. You can take a book or a magazine or, or pick a newspaper up, but yeah, they're, they're 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 sort of harder to find, I think, and nobody really wants to spend the money these days. But yeah, you could you could take a you could take something with you, I guess. But um, certainly from a from a work perspective, you just you just can't get things done. And I think people maybe take for granted that you you can work a lot on the move these days when you didn't used to be able to. I and mean, this this was obviously a thing in the pandemic as well like being able to work anywhere and not necessarily have to be in an office whether it's at home or somewhere else even if you've gone somewhere remote to be with your family with your with your parents perhaps to look after them or, or whatever you, you were still able to kind of take advantage of connectivity and yeah uh, you was yeah kind of... I, I, it's, it's this again the anxiety feeling i, I can some always feel it as, as we're talking but you've got, got the bus journey you've, you've, you've survived the bus journey and now you're now off and 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 uh, what, what was next <laughs> 
So next was so I, I so we went to Clapham Common. My son's like a, a sort of avid skateboarder, and uh, it's, I think it was um, it was it was still the holidays when I did it. So it's going back to sort of late summer. So I dropped him off at the skateboard park there, and it was like, well, I'm going to go down to the local cafe Nero, which was maybe 300, 400 meters away. Uh, he kind of knows where it is, so I said to him, just come and meet me when you've had enough. I'll be working there, and then we'll go and get some, you know, we'll go and get a late lunch. Um, and uh, yeah, left him again, slight feeling of anxiousness because you're thinking, well, if he falls off and breaks his knee, you know, he can't phone me. So you've immediately again, again, on the sort of short walk to the coffee shop, there's that feeling that you know, what, what if something goes wrong? And then um, I got to the cafe. Now, normally Wi-Fi is really good. I found at Cafe Nero. I use it quite a lot to, to work when I go into meetings in London and you sit down and you can get online. This one, for some reason, appalling. I mean, it's. Uh, it's got a, a sort of basement area in it that I had to go down and use because the, the upstairs was full and I just couldn't I couldn't access the, the Wi-Fi. Now, if I'd had cellular, what I could have done is, you know, what I was talking about doing on the bus and tethering the, the laptop to the phone, but it just wasn't an option. And it got really frustrating. It's one of those things where you, you're trying to log in and getting increasingly sort of angry. And I just couldn't I couldn't get work done. I had to be online to access a few things for for, for the work I had to do that afternoon um and then so it, what did you yeah. did you stay there or did you did you look at I, a, a, for another shop so I thought about looking for another shop and then I thought well if I look for another shop obviously Alex is not going to know where I am and he's going to come wandering along and think uh, he's not in Cafe Nero so what I ended up doing is having to to go back up quite quickly up to the skateboard park um now he's he's one of these people who He'll do, he'll do, some days he'll do skateboarding for eight hours and, and you don't see him. Other days he does half an hour and decides he wants something to eat. So there was always a chance that me on my way back up to the, the park, that he was going to be coming in the opposite direction, maybe on the opposite side of the road. I don't know if you know Clapham, but it's really busy at all times. So it's quite easy to miss people. So then again, you know, more anxiety. Is he coming the other way? Am I going to miss him? Are we going to overlap each other? Then he's going to get to Cafe Nero, see that I'm not there. And then there's this issue of like trying to actually locate him. So for a while there was this, there was this, I had the SIM card with me. Because I remember you said that when the rules were made clear, ah, oh, in an absolute emergency, you can put it back in. And I was thinking, does a lost I mean he's 13, he can look after himself and he knows how to get home from there. But I was still thinking, would this count as a as a as a putting back putting the SIM card back in moment? But um fortunately he was still there. So I got to the skateboard park and you know, managed to kind of drag him away. And we found, I think it was probably a KFC that we went into where they did have Wi-Fi. But th by this time, I'd wasted, you know, a couple of hours, I think, probably from the time of leaving the house. Just so trying two to two hours, two hours wasted. Yeah. And, and you bring up an interesting point there. Some of the things we, we almost take for granted now, like like location drops and geolocation. So if, if you have moved, you could just pop it in, say, this is where I am, or send someone a link to a map that shows where, where you are or, or equally. And, and yeah, we do them almost second nature now. And yeah. it's not having them, you, you know, again, you're sort of, you're wandering around in case someone's passed by over there. Well, the, the it's, mapping it's, thing, yeah, the mapping thing's interesting. I mean, I've, I've always thought that's one of the things I miss the most, actually, if I had a phone taken away from me. Um, I, remember, I remember going backpacking as a youngster when I was sort of 1920 before mobile phones were around or in widespread use and had to use those paper things <laughs> yeah you, exactly. you, you were sort of wrestling a, a fold out map or looking at lonely planet guides but um kind of obviously got through it I obviously did that and it didn't seem like a problem at the time if someone told me now that I had to go to um even somewhere that I know reasonably well without um you know a, a, a smartphone I'd be I'd be, I'd be sort of panic struck, I think. It's, um, you know, it's quite... There's a yeah. I was going to say, there's a safety element, isn't there? Because, you know, while you're obviously in, in Clapham, as you say, and you, you know the area, if you were in, you said you were in Madrid, for instance, recently, I think, and, I was, and if you were yeah. there, um, if you get off the plane, you get out of the taxi, you don't know the area, you're unfamiliar, and actually there's a huge reassurance thing that if you can look on it and take you there, you know, A to B directly, rather than getting lost in a town or city. Yeah, I mean, I had a, I was in Madrid actually a year ago. It's the same event that I was at one year ago. It's called uh, Fuse. But um, when I went last year, I had a very similar experience to this. Not not quite as bad, but I damaged a phone and had to fall back on a really old iPhone, like a six or something, like a, a super old model. Which obviously the software updates and you can't use various things and it's very slow. And 
So I was in I was in Madrid this time last year with this old handset that I was using temporarily until I managed to sort out this uh, problem and and I couldn't access various things and the mapping was quite slow and not working well and it was um, it was a difficult few days yeah it was one of those cases where you're kind of hanging around with people and relying on them more than you would have done because. You're just not sure where things are. Like, well, we're meeting somewhere. Well, I'm not quite sure how to get there. I'll tag along with you at the end of the day. Um, so you lose a little bit of your independence almost. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But, the, but I think the maps is one of the, um, you know, that's one of the most underrated features, I think, of, of, of phones. And um, yeah, certainly cellular. I mean, you, you just couldn't use that. Really. It, it doesn't make sense for it to be a Wi-Fi thing because Wi-Fi is all about being stationary and being in one hotspot. And you... You want to be looking at a map when you are actually on the move. Um, the other, the other thing I think with um, with with overseas trips that I, I, I noticed is, uh, I mean, it gets cited a lot as the as one of the kind of key four G applications. But Uber is Uber is just something that wouldn't really make sense. I don't think as a as a Wi Fi, um, you know, service. I mean, you, you probably could. You could sit in your cafe and order the taxi and then go outside and see it turning up, but. It's not ideal. It, it, it probably would lose connectivity. Yeah. It's on-demand transport. Again, it's one of those things that we've almost become you know, used to and expect. And I think as, as we go into, you know, as technology moves forward, you're sort of hearing, you know, taxis, that uh, driverless taxis that you just, you know, pick up and then off they go. And I think, you know, you, you mentioned Uber, obviously there's many other uh, 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 transport options to choose from um but it, it is it's instant and and it's and you get all the information in one go you know how far they are away you know if you wait on the street or don't need to wait on the street or if you can um same with you know getting your trains or, or particularly buses I'm, I'm i'm one of those that love uh, i think it's city mapper is my app that i use and I don't leave the house until the very very last minute whereas you know you used to if especially if it was raining or something have to stand at the bus stop oh, how long is this going to be and then three would turn up at once <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I use that when uh, when I'm waiting for them. is It's a good way to sort of see what's uh, what's coming because you usually don't have the, the the sort of signs above the uh, bus stops half the time these days that tell you how long it's going to be. So, um, yeah. I mean, there's there's so many of these. I think there's so many apps that have come along that we don't really we don't kind of recognise the value of them. You just take them for granted. You, you get so used to it being a feature of your phone that you that you don't kind of think about how useful it is uh, until it's until you go through something like this and it's taken away and then you, you kind of realize how much your life's changed to accommodate things like that. So, wow. yeah. It, and I think, you know, you look, you look at younger generations, they're even more connected, you know, some of the, some of the things they use, I, I don't even know yeah. what they are and I'm starting to feel old there. Um, so we've got to in, in the day, we, we, we've, you've, you've been there, you've, you've had your, you, you've, you know, you're eating, you've got KFC. <laughs> Where, what, what happened next? <laughs> So, so next, he he then went back to uh, the skate park, and I did manage to find somewhere eventually that was um, that had a sort of functioning Wi-Fi. But again, you're, I mean, I, I know Clapham reasonably well, but because this is the maps thing, because you sort of probably because I've used maps in the past to track somewhere down. I'm like, well, where's the best place to go for Wi-Fi? And I mean, there's there's lots of options, but it would have been handy to to have a map just to show me that there's a Starbucks in this direction that I've forgotten about as opposed to just kind of wandering around aimlessly and, you know, finding a pub that I didn't really want to be in when I had some work to do. So, but I did find somewhere that I could use um, and, and, and it got, and it was working. And at that point things were easier until going home. And then, and then it's the same problems again. It's the, it's the kind of bus journey back and, you know, not being connected. So it's the, it's, it's the similar feelings. It's the, it's the missing out on, either being able to work, you know, while you're traveling or just not having anything to do. And um, yeah, just, yeah, pretty uncomfortable, I think, on the whole. So it's so an uncomfortable, anxious feeling and, and not having your phone, which I, I think is, is where we've taken this challenge. And, and we've noticed that I think people are far more connected than they think. And um, I, I believe you've taken the challenge yourself. Uh, how, how did you? So just for listeners, it's the How Connected Are You Challenge, which is online at the moment. A simple survey it really asks you how connected you are and gives you a, a number of devices at the end of it. So Ian, I, I believe you've taken that challenge. How did it go? Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm, I sort of underestimated, I think, along with other people, how many, uh, how many gadgets there are that you that you use. I think, I think you'd you'd found this with the the survey on the whole, hadn't you? That people tend to think they're only, and I, I was the same. I think you, you you sort of think you've only got one or two, and and actually, there's there's a whole range of sort of um, things in the house that you're using that you um, 
you just forget about, I, I suppose. You just kind of take it for granted. Um, down, to, down to really little things like kind of connected headphones that you might use to go out running. I haven't sort of even considered those. But, but I, was, I mean, the, the numbers are pretty high. I remember in your survey that how the disparity between what people think they're connected to and how many how many uh, devices they actually have is is quite high, isn't it? Yes, well, I'd like to remind people that the survey is still open, so please do get on there. But we have taken a snapshot, and uh, as we know, the survey asked you, are you one to four, are you four to f five to nine, or are you, are you ten plus? And what we found is that eighty percent of people that are responding are one to nine devices, and of those, fifty percent are one to four. I mean, it's a really interesting. Like the highest person, one to four, put down they had forty-four devices they were connected 44. to. Wow, forty-four. But it's not the average. The average is around. 12 to 15 yeah, and occasionally 25 so it, it's it clearly showing that you know the sort of general perception that we have is that is that we know we're connected but we certainly aren't really necessarily keyed into how connected we are these days yeah did, did you have other people gareth who've who've done who've gone through what i've gone through uh on this on this sort of um you know day of day of no connectivity taking your sim card out and i'm, I'm interested to know if you've done it actually gareth and how <laughs> <laughs> I um, you you are our guinea pig Ian, on the, on this oh, one, and, and uh, you are the guinea pig, and I, it's one of those things. You know, you're right. Uh, you know, how easy is it? And, and do I? Because I like you, I have three children. We have multiple clubs to get them to. Um, it's something. You know, I, I, I may, maybe I should take it, and, and maybe I'll take up that challenge myself. But um, well, I haven't done it myself. No. I'd, I'd be interested to know how you do it, and and if you get people who are because. Um, I'm a journalist, obviously, but it'd be interested to know how people in other walks of life find it and, and maybe how people outside. Um, I think it'd be quite interested to see how people outside a, a big city maybe find it, because um, I'm wondering whether they're more or less reliant on mobile con connectivity than. Yeah, I think that's a, a very interesting point, because I think we, we, we talk here of, of things like on demand transport and we talk of uh, mobile payments on buses. That's not necessarily the norm outside of big cities like London or Manchester or others where um, taxi services are. You have to take it, it takes quite a while to get you have to book it ahead. And, and yet I think sometimes we talk about, uh, you know, being uh, we're, we're taking things for granted. You know, it's probably even more taken for granted because you have that, you know, uh, ubiquitous connectivity in, in cities. Yeah. I, I, the, another thing I'd be curious is, uh, I mean, you mentioned young people and the sort of things they use their phone phones for. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of 49. So I, I kind of feel I should be less reliant on it in a way than than other people. And obviously I missed it a lot and found it quite difficult to get through a day. But I'm guessing like, a, you know, a 13 year old or even a 20 year old or a 30 year old might have a totally different perspective on the sort of things they can't do. I mean, you see a lot of people on um, on buses watching videos like more than I would and, and using the, the data quite heavily on a on a 4G or 5G connection these days even if it's just for streaming like whatever it might be TikTok videos or YouTube or something I know my son does um he, he does filming of himself skateboarding and his friends and they upload the content so he's he goes through gigabytes like a, a nobody's like a crazy rate basically uh, we had to sort of up his allowance but he that's something he'd really miss if it was taken away from him I think the ability to just sort of do that I think I think you know we, are, we could almost say we were the first generation to have that connectivity. You know, I think we remember the dial-up when you used to go, you make the funny noise to connect, and now it's all, it's instant. And you know, you speaking about your 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 ch child there. I mean, I'm not mine as well. I mean, they're, they're, I've got a five-year-old and a and eight, nine-year-old and a ten-year-old, and they've all got devices, uh, and they know they know how to use them more than I do. Um, but you were know, mentioning sort of just on the children thing, and there's some of the statistics that are coming through. Like, if, uh, I, I can't remember the actual percentage but there's far more younger people who access the internet only through their mobiles than they do using sort of um, wi-fi and things now it's not to say they don't use wi-fi but essentially they will go home and sit on their mobile and want to use that rather than connect to laptops or tablets or others um, and that's a big thing for digital inclusion as we go forward and understanding the role of mobile and i think both at the elderly end and the, and the younger end we've got to understand the different dynamics that, that, that they have 
Um, but it, equally for the positive side of this, we, we are, we've got an upcoming podcast um, where we have a, uh, we're speaking to a school where they have a um, immersive 5G connected room, which is, is made up with projectors and you can touch things on things and you can, you can be in like underwater or you can uh, have dinosaurs walking across you. So the, the, the possibilities that actually in, in new ways of learning and new ways of connecting with this connectivity are, are, are fascinating. So you know, we look at it today in, in the conversation we're having as sort of, I wouldn't say a, a, a flippant side of things, but something you know we, we have and, and we think we've got all the time. And when it's taken away, we, there's that anxiety. But it, you know, we can get. But the opportunities. I mean, in your field of journalism, you must have seen some really fascinating things that are coming down the line. Yeah, I mean, I, you you do wonder how how far it's going to go. I, I think um, you know maybe not just phones. Now we're talking about smartphones here and taking the SIM card out. But I think. You, know, you, you were mentioning how many other devices in the household are connected these days. I'm wondering about connected devices when we go out and about uh, becoming a, a much bigger thing in the future. I mean, I know there's been talk for a long, long time about things like wearables and we've got these uh, fancy sort of Vision Pro headsets being shown off by Apple at the moment that cost a fortune. But they're obviously designed, I think, with a, a view to having them used out and about in the future, not just sitting at home. This whole ab ability to have a kind of uh, you, you know, your, your your eyes appear on the outside of the goggles, don't they? To make it, I mean, it sounds a bit weird in a way, but it makes it something that you could, um, you can see through it, and feasibly somebody can look at you and just see you as you are. Um, I don't know what 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 is it going to be like in five, ten years' time? Maybe people will be wandering around with Vision Pro type headsets or connected spectacles or or something else that requires a you know a high speed link and and as not not necessarily replace the smartphone, but is used for, for for different things that we can't kind of imagine at the moment. That, that whole area of XR is like I think going to be fascinating for the next few years. And just for just for our vision, XR. XR, yeah, extended reality, yeah. <laughs> extended yeah. reality, yeah. Uh, which I believe is is the way you can see through goggles and things. And yeah, it's like I think it's like a are... combination of VR, AR. Um, it's it's the uh, yeah, it's it's. It's it's a bit it's a bit sci-fi like I think the way it's uh, the way it's sort of um, described, but it's it's coming. I mean, I think it's, we, I was, uh, was going to say. I mean, we we look at you know, like you said, you mentioned the the Apple uh, sort of X, uh, Vision goggles. We've got Meta Quest with the new new versions coming up, and yet you know these seem you know expensive at this stage. But normally with these things, they come down in price and become more everyday use. And I think we had this sort of Google Glass earlier on, where you could you know you say you you be project an image onto your, your glasses and you could walk around and it would show you your directions and everything but equally as that technology becomes less costly it, it becomes more miniaturized it, we can see stuff and, and you mentioned wearables which i think is a fascinating area of technology i i was out the other day running and i've got this one here um just uh, and it and it, it ran out of charge and, and how annoyed i was because it couldn't record where i was i'd just done 11 kilometers according to this and i know i'd done 15 but the other aspect of it is, it is it tracks my health and it's something I can use. You know, I have blood pressure and issue and I, I go to the, the doctor, I can rec download that data. And it's not just a snapshot of when I'm in front of that doctor. They can get throughout where, where I've been and how, how, how my body's acting and, and see almost a, a, a more holistic view of, of, of what, what I might need. And you can imagine, you know, does this lead to things like bespoke um, medications that are coming down the line? It, it's a fascinating world. But again, you know, wearables are going to be part of providing that data to, to for our own health. Yeah, totally. Just on the on the on the out and about and running. Do you uh, do you listen to music or, or podcasts at all when you when you go and do that? Because uh... funnily enough, I'm I'm a, I'm a podcaster. Uh, I, yeah. I do love a good podcast. Um, I'm not a fan of running, but that keeps me off the vision that I'm actually running. So again, you know, that connectivity keeps me out. Otherwise, I would be someone who who wouldn't wouldn't keep at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed that's one other thing that maybe I didn't mention. But the uh, if you if you're someone who does listen to music or podcasts when you're out and about, which I do, and and it's all backed up to the cloud, uh, unless you've downloaded it to your phone, then you've had it. So, so this this uh, just being able to go out and put something on is yeah, you can't do that either. 
Yeah, I've, I've had that moment in the car as you're driving on a long journey. You've downloaded as much as you can and then you run out of, uh, they've finished and it's like, well, what can I have now? Because again, they expect it just to run on to the next uh, streaming episode. And when you, when you don't have that connectivity, you've got to then deal with uh, kids wondering how long it's going to take to get to the next connected place. Um, so that's fantastic. So uh, just to, to uh, you know, 24 hours you, you, you took this this challenge and, and you've managed to get out, you've managed to get back. I mean, uh, is it something you'd do again? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do it again. I mean, <laughs> there's, there, there's maybe like you know, if you're going to try and be positive about it. I mean, you mentioned you you, you you're on a bus. You, you you talk to your son rather than looking at your phone. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think we were, we were chatting before we did the podcast that there's a, a a communications aspect to having a phone that goes beyond just being able to kind of be with one person and talk to them. And it doesn't rule out doing that anyway. So um you know that's kind of a, a maybe maybe a negative way of seeing it in in, in a sense but you yeah it, it forces you to do other things i suppose it's not it's not all bad but it just i think these days we're so used to having connectivity everywhere we go and and so much of our work and you know our play is based around having access to that connectivity that if it's taken away from you it's incredibly disruptive um and yeah much m much worse than i thought i mean that was that, that was always going to be obvious by the fact that i postponed doing it about six times in a row I suppose but um, if I'd had to do it on a day when I had meetings and or, or I was overseas it would have been um, even worse I mean maybe the next challenge for me is to force myself to do that and then do another one of these for you. <laughs> Well, you, you've also challenged me to do it, so I feel like I'm going to have to do on that. So on that basis, I mean, look, that has been fantastic. And, and the whole point here really was to just, to, as, as a little bit of a fun game, a little bit of a challenge to sort of see how, what it meant in today's world to be connected. Because as I say, the part of this challenge really has to challenge people's perceptions as to as to how connected they are. And, and what we're finding is that people are certainly. So I would certainly like to thank you, Ian, for taking the challenge for us and like reading to, to publish it. <laughs> Um, and uh, listen, sorry, Ian. <laughs> very, very welcome, and uh, yeah, fun, fun to do. Um, not, as I say, difficult, but um, but sort of sort of entertaining at the same time. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, we're glad, we're glad you enjoyed it and got through it because uh, I know your anxiety levels are down now. And uh, for everyone, uh, you know, we, as I say, our next podcast that we've got, we're doing, uh, we're learning about immersive places in uh, via via 5G technology in a local school. Um, it's a really, really fascinating one and learning how the children use it, but also how the school can use it and, and actually the wider um, society can, can use that space as well is really, really interesting. That's coming out in a few weeks. Um, please do sign up to the podcast. Uh, it's mobileuk.org. We're, uh, we're on SoundCloud, we're on Spotify and we're on YouTube. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you once again.